hello guys and welcome back again to my youtube channel if you're seeing this face for the very first time my name is faith or johnny and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back again so in today's video i'll be telling you what to do immediately you get to the uk on a dependent or a spouse or a fiance visa so if this is something you want to know watch this video till the end but before we get into the video i want to say that henceforth i'll be giving shout out to you guys so if you want to get shout out anytime on any of my videos just subscribe and come and leave a comment that is all you need to do and you will get shout out on um, the next video i'll upload so today's shout out goes to well yeah he was the one that gave me this idea to shoot this video so this video this i'm shooting this video from one of the comments he dropped on one of my videos he said thanks faith for replying would be nice to add some content about education msc ilr pathways national insurance registration that is ni covid testing etc thank you so much for the idea even though um I might not be talking about everything that he wrote but i'll be mentioning some things which is the ilr which is very important if you're moving to the uk and you plan on staying in the uk and get your national uh, resident permit <laughs> why do i say resident permit and you plan on getting your indefinite leave to remain that is the meaning of ilr if you're planning on getting your indefinite leave to remain then you need to watch this video because everything i'm going to be sharing in this video is part of the things that you really need when you want to apply for your ilr thank you so much for commenting on one of my videos i really appreciate y'all saying so much let's get right into the video number one thing you need to do immediately you land the uk is you should go and get your resident permit brp so when you receive your passport like when you receive your passport to come to the uk there is a letter that letter will be telling you like the post office where you're supposed to go and get your brp and this must be done within 10 days of you arriving in the uk or before the letter they give they gave you from um, your visa approval before it expires when you get to the uk if you're not fully vaccinated yet and you're coming to the uk this period you need to self-isolate for 10 days that means you're not going out of the house for 10 days then i think but then you, you also need to i think the day you're completing your self-isolation you need to go and get your brp like that day or at least before the letter expires number two on the list that is if you don't already have this because when i got my brp this was already on it which is your national insurance number nin this is called the short form is nin national insurance number so most times it, it depends on the visa you you are when you came into the country with some most times maybe because i came in as a dependent of a tier 2 visa so based on the fact that i'm a dependent of a tier 2 visa my national insurance my national <laughs> based on the fact that i was a dependent of a tier 2 visa my national insurance number was already written at the back of my brp but in case you don't have your national insurance number you can apply for this online in order to get your national insurance number you must have the right to work or study in the uk so you may be asked to interview with job center plus who would want to know why you need a national insurance number and what what your current circumstances are so these are all the questions they would ask you make sure you get your national insurance number because without the national insurance number you won't be able to get a job in the uk yeah most employers um would request for your national insurance number and again i think i will have to make a separate video or maybe do a tutorial video to show you just in case because i'm having this issue and i feel that maybe a lot, some people might also have the same issue because um when i was applying for a job i got to this stage where i'm supposed to show my right to work because most times when you're applying for a job if you're not a citizen of yeah, if you're not a british citizen you must show them your right to work and which is your brp your national insurance number but some of these um companies or employers 
they really do not have so much details on how to figure out if you have the right to work or not but there's a way you can share your right to work with your employer which is going to be like a code you go on the uk um government website to search for your code what what they call it they call it there's a name they call it i can't remember pay your code and send to your employer and that way they can use that code to check on the government website if you have the right to work and or if you have any restrictions to work we all know that based on the visa you're coming to the country with, you might not be able to work on certain visa or if your visa is or you have time limitation which is maybe a student visa or something or even if you don't have there there are some jobs you can do like on my visa being a depend dependent of the title visa i am not allowed to work as a sport person and i'm not allowed to be dent uh, work as a dentist then dentist yeah so they will give you those um limitations those restrictions there are some jobs you cannot be able to do on certain visa so that way the employers will check all those things so they don't um go against the government rules okay so the next thing again you need to do is to add your name to the tenancy agreement <laughs> i know this one you know coming from nigeria i'll be like um the uh, he's the man of the house so you should be the one to pay rent <laughs> even if you're not going to be the one paying rent your name needs to be on the tenancy agreement as a spouse or um if you're the, if you're married to him or you guys are in a civil civil relationship partnership but this civil par partnership or you guys are engaged or you are in a sort of a relationship because in the uk you don't necessarily need to be married legally before your relationship will be um before they acknowledge your relationship so if you are living with your boyfriend or your fiance or you guys are planning to get married as long as you guys are living together and you guys decide to do stuff together they recognize the relationship okay so when you get here you need to change the tenancy agreement that is if your partner is already here before you get here or if you guys are coming together tell your husband or your wife to rent the, uh, the apartment in you guys' name like your name and his name your name needs to be on the tenancy agreement and if he has already rented the apartment in his name or her name you can just always um, contact the landlord that you want to change the tenancy agreement and put your spouse name so yeah that is very very important the next on the list is you need to add your name to the council tax so there's something they call the council tax in the uk so when you're getting an apartment you pay for council tax it's very important so you need to include your name in the council tax you have to be over 18 to rent your own house so in most cases to add your name to the council tax bill you must call your local council office to complete a change of circumstance form from many councils another thing you need to do again is to register in your local gp or dentist which is for your health just in case you have any um you're sick or you're feeling somehow you can easily contact your gp for medical checkup and all of that all all practices will be registered will be a registration form available which we must submit in order to formally register with them as an nhs patient when you complete and return the form, the new practice will write to you and confirm your registration. So this thing, you can actually do it online. Immediately you get here, just look for a GP close to you. Make sure you look for a GP close to you. You can just go on Google, type um, GP close to me or something. It will bring it out. That, that was how we did it. So it will bring it out. It will show you the miles. It could be one mile away, two mile away, or 0, 0.0 something miles. So make sure you select the one very closest to you register online and then they register you with the nhs you get your nhs number and all of those so that will be out of the way so the next thing you need to do is add your name to many utility bills as possible so if your husband is paying for electricity or your wife is paying for electricity or let me use partner if your partner is paying for electricity you should pay for water bills okay if your partner is paying for the phone bills pay for the um, internet bills so make sure you are paying bills because like i said watch this video till the end because i'm going to be telling you reason why you should do all of this and if you've watched this video till this extent and you're getting value from what i'm saying and you've not subscribed to this channel 
please click the subscribe button below please support your girls to motivate me to shoot more videos like this so yeah as i was saying you need to include your name in most of the utility bills as possible i mean you should be paying for uh, bills do not leave it to your partner it don't this is very important okay then the next on your list um i said on your list <laughs> the next is open your account open a bank account and a proof of address anyway you can use your council tax as proof of address and your bank accounts can also serve as proof of address the nhs letter because once you register with a gp you get a letter from the nhs so that can also be used as proof of address why do you need proof of address when you are looking for a job when you are applying for jobs they will ask for all of those things they need proof of address for you to be able to get a job in the uk okay so you need to open a bank account and um, they will send you your um, account number your card and all of those so the next thing which is not on this list but thank god i remember is you need to register to vote yes you need to register to vote it's very important when you get to the uk okay then the next on the list is uh you need to apply for your provisional driver's license your provisional driver's license can also serve as your identity okay as an identity card even it may be uh you don't have your brp which i don't think you should, you should definitely have your brp so you need a provisional driver's license if you plan on driving in the uk you would the process of driving in the uk is not so easy before you can get your driver's license in the uk is a, a very long process so when you get your provisional license you are like a few steps closer to getting your driver's license but anyway the reason you need your provisional license is because you need it's a form of identity in the uk so aside your prp your driver's license can serve as a form of ident identity also some jobs will require you to have a provisional driver's license then the next thing you need to do is to apply for a joint mobile contract so let's say if your partner is already on a, a mobile contract you should do it together like have a joint mobile contract with your partner this will go this will help you like it's very important so both of you are using the same mobile um contract most mobile companies now offer a shared plan option you will get a one bill at the end of every month you should request that your name is shown on the contract and on the bills a shared plan can be for two mobile phones or just two sim card if you already have a mobile phone then the next thing you need to do which is get your cv and start looking for a job okay so these are all the important things you need to do if you're in, on a spouse or a dependent or a fiance visa in the uk or immediately you get to the uk okay now let's get to the reason why you need to do this to apply for the um indefinite leave to remain if you have your indefinite leave to remain that means you can come and go as you wish that means you no longer need the visa to visit the uk okay and after one year of getting your indefinite leave to remain you can apply for citizenship guys that is it we have come to the end of this video thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for the support i love you guys please if you've not subscribed to this channel click the subscribe button down below and tell me share your comments tell me what you think in the comment section so yeah see you in my next video i love you ciao